In this video I will explain how to keep track of the player's progress in save states. In part 1 I introduced checkpoint objects as potential starting locations. If you trigger a checkpoint with an on message it creates an autosave. You can do this with a lever object. To verify that it works you can go into the pause menu and load the game. As you can tell, this takes you to the checkpoint. To allow the player to create a named save file, you can use a save point object instead. Create and link the save point to the checkpoint. Save point objects interact with checkpoints in a special way, so the game will show this dialog when you attack the save point. It is possible to enable or disable a save point by using triggers. As I said in part 5, you can set the timed lever delay to zero and it will never return. However, the game does not automatically store this in your save file. So even if I save the game and then load it, the lever will always have returned to its off state. To keep track of this kind of progress, you can use keys. Think of a key as the name of a task that can be completed. When it is done, the key is added to a set that is stored in the save file. Keys cannot be removed from the set unless the player starts over or loads an old save file. One way to add keys is to use a key setter. Type a name for the key. This is a triggerable object, so I can uh, link the lever to it. Now when I attack the lever, it will add the key. To make something react to a key, you can use a key trigger. Use the same name and create it. If I link this key trigger to a lamp, it should now light up when I hit the lever. If you load a game where the key has been added, the key trigger will send the on message immediately, thus turning the lamp on. Otherwise, the lamp will be off. To wrap this up, you can link the key trigger to the lever itself. Now, the lever will be activated when loading a game where the lever has been activated before. We can test that this works by loading the save file with and without the key. I mentioned keys can only be added and not removed. Sometimes this is insufficient. If that's the case, you can use a counter instead. A counter is a name that has an integer number associated with it, which defaults to zero. To modify a counter, you can use the counter incrementer object. I will set this one to increment the counter hits by one. The relative property means 1 will be added to the counter. If this is off, then the counter will be set to 1. I can connect a lever with a low delay to the counter incrementer and use a counter trigger to send a message when the counter reaches a certain value. In this case, it will send an on message when the counter is greater or equal to 5. Now the door will open when I hit this lever five times. Counters can be increased or decreased using a negative number. You can also set this object to do something when an off message is received. If this is enabled and relative is also enabled, then this value will be subtracted from the counter when an off message is received. If this is disabled, then the counter will be set to zero when an off message is received. Another way to add keys or counters is to put them on a checkpoint. These lists contain keys and counters separated by spaces. The keys get added when the checkpoint is triggered or when you start at this checkpoint. The same is true for counters, but you also need to add an equal sign and a value. If you want the counter to be at least this value, then you can add a plus after the value. 
Now this counter will keep its current value if it was already 5 or more. For the opposite effect you can type a minus instead. Recall that you can access the map properties by deselecting all objects. If you disable the starting checkpoint by selecting null in this list or pressing Alt C without the checkpoint selected, then a dummy checkpoint is used when you tab out of the editor. The location of the dummy checkpoint is the location you were in when you opened the editor. You can add keys to the dummy checkpoint here. If I add this key to the dummy checkpoint, this save point will now start enabled. You can use this for debugging purposes. There is also a support for organizing keys into sets. For instance, there is a special key set for the blobs. The name of this set is Y blobs, capital Y and B. To specify a set, type the set name, then a period, then the key name. The key name for a particular blob is the map name, followed by an underscore, and the blob object's name. This indicator lamp should now light up when I collect the blob. Instead of typing out the entire map name, you can use the shorthand map in angle brackets. There is also a trigger for the number of keys in a given set. So if I do this, then the lamp should light up when I collect two blobs. These mechanisms are very primitive, so if you're making puzzles or events, then it can be a bit of work to make sure things persist between saving and loading, but they do the job.